Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. <clears throat> the text chosen for the minor festival of St. Simon the Zealot and St. Jude is written in the book of Jude, beginning at verse 4. Dear fellow redeemed, on this festival we celebrate the work of two of the apostles of Jesus Christ. I'll begin by saying we don't know very much about St. Simon the Zealot. He is called Simon the Canaanite by both St. Matthew and St. Mark in the original Greek text of their gospel accounts. But he is referred to by St. Luke, both in the Gospel of Luke and in the book of Acts, as Simon the Zealot. And so, there is some debate as to who this man really was and what he was. Some believe that he was of Canaanite descent and had such a zeal for the Jewish faith that he was referred to as the Zealot by St. Luke. In all of our English translations, of, I shouldn't say all, but most, you will find even in the Gospel of Matthew and Mark that he is referred to as St. Simon the Zealot. And so it may have been that he was a very zealous person, or there is a possibility that he also may have been part of a Jewish sect known as the Zealots, which is written about by the Jewish historian Flavius Josephus. He mentions that <clears throat> there were four main sects of the Jews in those days. There were the Pharisees, the Sadducees, which we are familiar with from the Bible. There were also a group of people called the Essenes, which were sort of uh, hermit-like. And then there was this fourth group called the Zealots. They were more political than they were religious, the Zealots. And they believed that they would make Israel a great nation again, through social and military revolution. Josephus also says that most of the other Jewish groups looked down on them. Simon the Zealot never speaks in the Bible. He's the only apostle from whom we have no utterance at all. There are references to him, extra-biblical references, from the Pseudopigrapha. That is, books that are not considered necessarily to be inspired. In fact, we know they're not inspired. But they have stories that go beyond what the Bible says about certain people. And one of them is St. Simon the Zealot, who, according to church tradition, left Jerusalem and went to Egypt, where he did mission work there. And there he also met up with St. Jude, and the two of them paired up together and went to Persia to minister to the people there. But that is also <clears throat> where both of them ended up dying martyrs' deaths. Jude is an apostle that we know a little bit more about. He also is called Thaddeus. He is the man who we believe wrote the book of Jude, from whence comes our sermon text for today. He refers to himself in the very first verse of his book, which is only one chapter long, and we sometimes refer to it as a New Testament postcard rather than a book, he refers to himself in that very first verse as the brother of James. And we believe that the James he is referring to would have been the most famous one, James of Jerusalem, also known as James the son of Alphaeus, also known as James the Less, also known as James the brother of our Lord. Which also means that both Jude and James may have been either the stepbrothers or half-brothers of our Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, when Jesus went back to Nazareth, his hometown, to preach, Matthew tells us that the people said, Isn't this the carpenter's son? Isn't his mother's name Mary? And aren't his brothers James and Joseph, Simon, and Judas? And so it is possible that either Joseph had children from a former marriage before he met Mary, and they were Jesus' stepbrothers, or that Mary and Joseph had children after Jesus, or it could also 
possibly mean that they were relatives because the word brother can also be used to denote a, a relative or some other relationship, to have some other relation, close relationship, not necessarily a sibling. Jude speaks only once in the Bible, and you heard it in our gospel reading for today. When Jesus was explaining that he would not reveal himself to the world, but to those who love him, the Bible says, then Judas, and not Judas Iscariot, because there were two apostles named Jude or Judas, but he said, then Judas said, but Lord, why do you intend to show us, or to show yourself to us and not to the world? And the simple explanation to that is that no one can know God except through faith. The Holy Spirit reveals Jesus to us by faith. And through faith, we receive many rewards and blessings, the chief of which is to know our salvation through faith in Jesus Christ, which brings us to the beginning of our sermon text for today. Our sermon text is going to be based on this phrase from our, or, or, or rather our sermon theme is going to be based on these words from our text, contend for the faith. You know, as we approach the celebration of the Reformation, remember how Martin Luther nailed the 95 theses to the castle church door in Wittenberg, Germany on that night of October 31st, 1517. And Luther nailed those 95 theses to the door because he was hoping that he could challenge someone to debate some of the problems in the Roman church at that time, some of the false teachings and some of the false practices. Perhaps Luther was a little bit naive and didn't realize what kind of a can of worms he was opening. But within a matter of weeks, his 95 theses were not only copied and printed, but were sent all over the place and within a very short time were even in the hands of the Pope in Rome who condemned Luther as a heretic. Luther intended one purpose for his 95 theses, but ended up finding that he was in the middle of something much bigger. In a similar way, St. Jude told his readers that when he first began writing this little short letter, it was his intention to write about the common salvation that we share. But then he says that it was necessary for him to write and urge them to contend for the faith which was once entrusted to the saints. St. Jude had one idea about what he was going to write, but the Holy Spirit had a different idea and used his letter for a much greater purpose. Today we are among the recipients of this praiseworthy little New Testament postcard. Its unmistakable theme is spelled out for us. Contend for the faith. And we are going to talk about two kinds of faith. Faith in which we believe and also faith by which we believe or faith which believes. Note that Jude encourages us to contend for the faith. The definite article is used with it. The faith. Whenever you are reading the Bible and you come across that short phrase, the faith, usually it is a reference to the faith in which we believe. That is to say, the doctrine. The faith or doctrine or teachings upon which we base our trust or confidence in Christ. And that's the second kind of faith I'm going to be talking about later. But our trust, our confidence in Christ, our belief in God's word, that is the faith which believes or the faith by which we believe. But Jude is speaking here, first of all, about the faith in which we believe, the truth of God's word, because he says, contend for the faith, which was once for all delivered to the saints. In other words, this was God's revelation to the Holy Christian Church so that they might know who he is and what he has done to save us. And Jude says, let us contend for it. That is, don't compromise it, but hold fast to it because the word of God is the only source for Christian life and salvation. Everything that God revealed to us in the Holy Scriptures, in the Bible, the doctrine. You know, this little book of Jude is very similar in every way to the book of Second Peter. If you ever read the book of Jude, 
then also read along with it 2 Peter. Likewise, if you read 2 Peter, also read the little book of Jude. Because they are almost identical. Word for word, sometimes phrase for phrase, they quote one another. And they follow the same subject matter in a, in a pattern. But there are two main differences. <clears throat> First of all, the book of 2 Peter is longer than the book of Jude. And also, 2 Peter speaks in future tense. These are the things that will happen. While Jude speaks in past or present tense. They are happening and have happened already. I'll give you an example. Peter says in chapter 2, But there were also false prophets among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you. They will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the sovereign Lord who bought them, bringing swift destruction on themselves. Jude, on the other hand, writes, For certain men whose condemnation was written about long ago have, past tense, secretly slipped in among you. They are, present tense, godless people who change, present tense, the grace of our God into a license for immorality and deny, present tense, Jesus Christ, our only sovereign and Lord. In other words, Jude seems to be verifying what Peter predicted. Peter said, this is going to happen. The false prophets are coming. And Jude said, just as it was written about, they have come. They're here already. And they're among you. Beware of them. They want to rob you of your, of your salvation by undermining the word of God. Jude describes these false prophets as godless men who change the grace of God into a license for immorality and deny the only, or deny Jesus Christ, our only sovereign and Lord. You know, we live in a day when there are many pastors and religious leaders who say that the Bible is not the true and inerrant word of God. It is one of many books, one of many uh, pieces of literature that you can read for wisdom, they say, but they will not say it is the word of God. And they deny the existence of hell. And they no longer see sins such as adultery and homosexuality as wrong. You know, not long ago, I met with a young couple in my office. They were engaged and they came for premarital counseling. And I asked them, first of all, are you living together outside of marriage? And they said, no, we are not. And I said, I'm glad to hear that because it is so prevalent in our day and age. And they looked at each other and they chuckled a little bit. And uh, they said, we're sorry for, for laughing, but we made, a, uh, we, we made an agreement. The young woman who was in my office was not a member of our congregation, but a member of another church outside of our fellowship. But the two of them had made an agreement that they would go both to her pastor and to his pastor for premarital counseling and compare the two. So they first went to her pastor, and she asked the same question. She said, are the two of you living together outside of marriage? And they said, no, we're not. And she told them, you should be. How else are you going to get to know one another? You see, that is what we are contending with. St. Jude said, they will use grace as a license to sin. But it is never that. Sin is sin and God condemns it. We cannot do what we do in the name of love and defy God. <clears throat> Excuse me. In the end, false teachers deny Jesus Christ as our only sovereign and Lord. When they directly contradict what God's word teaches, they are rebelling against God, says Jude. He says, dear friends, remember what the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ foretold. They said to you, in the last times there will be scoffers who will follow their own ungodly desires. These are the men who divide you, who follow mere natural instincts, who do not have the Spirit. Jude says these are the last times. And this is already happen happening right now. Jude said that 2,000 years ago. Things have gotten progressively worse. Yes, we live in the last times. Jude lived in the last times. So did, so did St. Paul. They say it. A number of the apostles say it. But we need to understand that the last times began when Jesus died, rose, and ascended into heaven. We are in that final stretch and Jesus could return at any time. And therefore, James, or rather Jude says, contend for the faith. 
Hold fast to what God's word teaches. Don't let it go. Don't compromise it. Don't let anyone cast doubt on it. For the Bible is the true and inerrant word of God, without mistakes, without contradictions. And it is only the source and standard for Christian life and salvation. It is the basis for the faith by which we believe. That is, it is God's word and his promise in which we put our trust. Our trust is the faith by which we believe, or the faith which believes. Jude writes, but you, dear friends, build yourselves up in your most holy faith and pray in the Holy Spirit. After this sermon, we are going to confess our Christian faith according to the Apostles' Creed. We are going to say, I believe in God, the Father, Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and so forth. That is the confession of our faith. That is expressing what we believe, that we put our trust in God. The Bible says that with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That is to say, what is in our heart is also going to be what we confess with our mouths. What we really believe is what we will really practice. James says, Contend for that faith, the word of God, in which we put our trust. We put our trust in Jesus Christ, who lived the perfect life that we could not live. Who died on the cross to take the punishment for our sin. Who rose from death in order that we can be certain that we have peace with God and eternal life in heaven. James ends this short letter by giving this encouragement. He says, Keep yourselves in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. You see, that is our goal, dear Christian friends. Eternal life in heaven. That's what this is all about. Jesus told us, do not let your hearts be troubled. He said, in my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go there to prepare a place for you. And we can be absolutely certain that Jesus has prepared a place for us in heaven. And Jude says that is our goal. He says, keep yourselves in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Jesus said in our gospel reading for today, and Jude was perhaps keying off on those very words because he asked the question, Jesus, how are you going to reveal yourself to us and not to the world? Because Jesus said, if you love me, my Father will love you. And we will come to you and reveal ourselves to you. We will make our dwelling place with you. Jude perhaps was reflecting on what Jesus said and said, let us keep ourselves in that love of God. That is, let us remain faithful to the word of God as he has revealed, it, revealed himself to us in the Bible. May we never lose the reward that is ours in Christ, but hold fast to it as our great hope and promise. God's word makes it certain. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, contend for the faith. Amen.